A desperate struggle for freedom of speech by women living in some of the world's most restrictive countries. A sign of our times, but also the subject of a new film, Forbidden Voices. Ioanni Sanchez from Cuba could not be here. Ioanni Sanchez's blog gives a critical portrayal of Cuban life under its current government. It receives up to 14 million hits per month from around the world much to the anger of the official media in Cuba. Farnaz Saifi is an Iranian blogger and journalist living in Germany. Her role as a women's rights activist in Iran has prevented her from returning home. So you learn to censor yourself from a very early age in countries like my country. And you... Um, and you become good to censoring yourself, unfortunately. Zhengjian blogs about human rights abuses in China. In a country where internet access is strictly censored, her online activity and her marriage to human rights activist Hu Jia has kept her under house arrest. These three women are extremely courageous. Uh, I was really interested, I was really fascinated about their way of being political. They really wrote from a really personal point of view. But um, being personal and telling their stories was so strong. I think this is really a way women are telling stories and how women try to change the world. We have lost everything in Iran. These women have paid dearly for their stories, suffering violence, they say, harassment and detainment. In 2007, Farnaz Saifi was arrested and interrogated. One of the main content of the interrogations was the articles I wrote in my blog. And according to them, um, challenging the inequality and injustice women face in my country was, was something they, they call it acting against the national security of the country. As blogs and social media ignited uprisings across the Arab world, authorities began to take notice of the power of the Internet. It was also really um, impressive for me to see that the governments really fear these women. I mean, they're, they're women, they're talking about their daily lives, but the government, they really fear that they are so outspoken and they talk about what is really happening, about reality in their countries. Despite their suffering, these women have helped encourage peaceful protests across the world, calling for democratic change. I always think change has a price. Even if my blogging um, uh, helped two other women to start expressing themselves and writing about inequality, I think it's a big achievement. It's, it means that it's worth it, all of it worth it. As Iran, Cuba, and China continue to restrict dissident voices, blogging gives a rare taste of freedom, but it comes with a price.